Hey there, I'm Sean C. Davis. I work on the developer education team at Netlify, and I'm really excited for this conversation today. I'm joined by Felicia Chang, and we're going to walk through a very cool project that she's built with and deployed to Netlify. Thanks for joining me today, Felicia. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm super excited to get into this. But before we actually look at the project and the code, um, just curious to hear a little bit from you about your, your background. I am a founding engineer at Jamsocket. We are a platform for deploying sync engines for collaborative applications like Figma or Google Docs. We recently released a sync engine called YSuite that uses YJS and Jamsocket to give you collaboration out of the box. And recently we spoke at Netlify's conference about an extension that we made that makes it super easy to deploy your collaborative applications on Netlify. And because of that, I thought it'd be really fun to build a sort of Google Docs clone that uses YSuite and Supabase, which is another extension that was featured at the conference, and kind of show how these tools work together to um, kind of create a larger application. That's very cool. Yes, I'm, I'm really excited to dig into it because I feel like developers and non-developers are using these sorts of things all the time. And so it's it's really interesting to get to kind of peek uh, under the hood and see how uh, how one particular approach works. Yeah. And there's so, all these like this whole suite of tools that like power real time applications. And it's interesting to see how they fit together. Yes, absolutely. Well, with that, can we uh, dive in and, and get a little preview? Yeah. What's cool about this app is um, it has like authentication. So you have accounts and um, we're using Supabase auth for that. And here, this is like my document. I can here. And then when I share this, like making the document public, um, I can go to another window, open that doc and collaborate. So you can find the code here at the YSuite Supabase demo. The main two tools that this application uses is YSuite and Supabase. So um, we're going to start with creating a YSuite service on the Jamsocket dashboard. Um, so let's do my little and here I'm going to create a connection string, which is like an API, um, like an API key. And I'll just add that as an environment variable. So this is connecting to a Y suite backend. Okay. And that's going to do the synchronization, um, or it's going to sync the data and persist your data to S3. So once we have that, we want to also create a Supabase project. Let's just say we got the API keys and stuff and we added that to our m.local. Mm -hmm. um, what we want to do then is use um, the SQL code in setup.sql, and this will sort of um, create the tables for you. And so Supabase has this really nice SQL editor that just lets you run SQL code to set up um, the table. And because I already did that here, it's saying like docs already exists, but that's how you would like set up um, your Supabase side of the application. Gotcha. And what this is doing is it's creating um, a docs table, a permissions table, and a users table that's public so we can access it. Let's run our app. So this is kind of the auth stuff that's like provided from Supabase, which makes it super convenient. So you're using Supabase's um, built-in components? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, and so now I can create a doc. And when I create a doc, it basically, gen I ask YSuite to generate this doc ID that I append to the URL. And that's also what's saved in Supabase so that when I want to open a doc, um, I'm retrieving this like doc ID. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. Cool. And so this looks pretty much exactly like what I showed 
live. And so what we want to do is deploy this application to Netlify. Conveniently, there's this deploy to Netlify button here. And what that will do um, is deploy this site. Um, let's call this my... OK, so once I've done that deployment step, in order to get the app to work, I need to set up my environment variables so that I can connect to Y Suite from Prod as well as Supabase. So once you've installed the extension in your sites, this like um, extension tab will show and you can find Jamsocket there. Um, what you want to do is connect um, to Jamsocket. And since I'm already logged in, that step is very easy. And I'll select um, my Jamsocket account. Um, I already have a service, so I can just search for it. Now we're connected. Um, the envir environment variables have been created. And the way you can check that is in the site configuration, um, you look at environment variables. And so we have this Y Suite connection string that's been created by Jamsocket. Yes, great, great. And we just added that little label there so you can see that it's like, it didn't magically appear, the extension controlled that for you, did that on your behalf. Which exactly. Is and like, if you wanted to change it manually, you still have access to that. It's just like an easy step to connect to the same service that you already created on Jamsocket. And then we're going to do the same thing on Supabase. And Supabase's extension can be found in the site configuration under the general tab. And here, I just want to connect to my Supabase project, and it's going to generate the, the following environment variables. Now that I've set up um, these environment variables, I'm just going to deploy the site again. Once that deploy is ready, um, you can sort of Netlify generates a link for you so you can like play with it live. That's the whole application and the whole like deployment flow. Awesome. From here, maybe I can give you kind of a brief overview of what the code looks like. I think it'd be it'd be really interesting, just kind of a sneak peek of like totally. what, to what what kind of effort is involved in terms of yeah, bringing this sort of thing to life. Actually, I started this app using kind of like create Supabase app that has authentication built in. So I didn't really make too many changes to these auth pages. What I think the majority of the app consists of is this document folder. So once you've logged in, you can access this document folder. And that home page that we saw is two components, this create doc component and display doc component. So when you create a doc, um, I've kind of organized all the queries that we have to YSuite and Supabase in, these, in this queries.tsx folder. And um, what that creation, what that doc creation step looks like is we um, call create doc um, on the YSuite side, and we get this doc ID back and we save that to Supabase. So that when we then want to um, access a doc, we access it using that doc ID that we got from Supabase. And that kind of page that opens, that document page that we see here, when we click on um, a doc link is powered by um, this page.tsx inside um, this IDE folder. In this page, what we're doing is we're rendering some of that doc metadata. So this like editable doc title, um, we have these like share, this share permission modal, and then we have the text editor itself. And so, um, these comp all the sort of like auxiliary components like this um, editable uh, title and share permissions that that's like in the super base world and then the y suite world is this ydoc provider and slate editor the ydoc provider essentially fetches the um, yjs document from y suite um, and makes it available as global state for your application and so what I want to, how I access that doc is I pass in the doc ID and also um, some like authentication uh, endpoints. Then um, 
in the slate editor itself, the Y doc is an, a Y XML data type. So XML provides like rich text editing um, as kind of like a high powered string. And so um, what we do is we use YJS shared data types, um, which automatically kind of like handle the synchronization, the conflict resolution for um, your data type. Um, and YJS is kind of like powered with CRDTs. You can think of it as equivalents to like JavaScript types. So they have like maps and strings. And um, the main difference is that when you use those types, it automatically makes um, that data collaborative. Actually, the Slate editor was a demo that was contributed by um, like part of, or yeah, a demo from the sort of Y Suite open source community. And so what I really did was I plugged in this code and it's actually fairly complex. Like this rich text editor has a lot of um, components to it that make up all these different like editing features. So mm -hmm. like um, you know, making this bold and things like that. This is saved as um, a huge Y doc. Um, and that Y doc gets synchronized and persisted with Y suite whenever you edit. And those are kind of the main components of the app. Very cool. Yes, yes. This is this is super exciting. So if folks want to um, tinker around with this, where's the where's the best place that they can go find this and get started? So if you want to kind of explore further, you could check out the Y Suite Super Base demo repo. Um, it's on GitHub and um, clone it, play around with it. Awesome. Well, this this was really really interesting to me. I'm I'm really excited to tinker around with it and uh, appreciate you showing us around and and for your time today, Felicia. Yeah, thanks so much.